Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Garish, owner of Backwoods Pursuit, and today we are going to be looking at some of the best binoculars under $500. This is part of a huge review that we've been doing and taking binoculars, 26 pairs of binoculars actually from the $300 range all the way up to the Alpha Glass out there. So we're going to break this down into price categories so it's not such a long video. We're going to go through the pros and cons of each of these after doing our extensive testing. Uh, the review on this is over on the website, backwardspursuit.com. Go check that out. Put a link to that down in the description as well as the link to all these binoculars so you can check them out for yourself. Let's dive into each of these binoculars and see the pros and cons of them. As always, really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Put links to all that down in the description. Let's dive into this review. to get started here we are going to start here on this end this is where we start at three hundred dollars um, we've got the maven cs1 and the athlon midas they're both around that three hundred dollar mark um, so they're kind of within this five hundred dollar category there's kind of two categories the three hundred dollar category and then the rest of these are closer to five hundred anyways between these maven cs1 uh, these were a real nice pair of binoculars particularly for the price point um, they're, of course, as you can imagine, being at that price point, you are not going to have great edge-to-edge -edge clarity with these, but the center of the image is pretty good. Uh, eye cups are nice and tight, uh, real, uh, real defined clicks. Not a lot of play in there. You would expect to have more on a, a less expensive pair of binoculars like that, but they really do a good job that way. Uh, diopter here uh, does not lock, which is you know not something that's surprising at this price point. Overall performance on these was good. Not great, but good, uh, particularly for a $300 pair of binoculars. Um, really nice focus wheel, actually. Not a lot of play in there, not real mushy either. So really impressed with that on the Midas. Or, I'm sorry, the, uh, the CS1 from, uh, from Maven. Now the Athlon Midas here, another really good pair of binoculars. Athlon makes some great glass, particularly for their price point. Their value is fantastic. Uh, one of the things with the uh, Midas here that was not as good as on the... the uh, Maven there was the eye relief and now you don't have as much eye relief on the Midas as you did with the Maven um, But real nice eye cups with these as well. You can kind of tell you just don't have quite as much I don't remember the specs exactly on both of these, but the, uh, the Maven definitely had more eye relief Optical performance was better on the Midas than the Maven CS1 a little better edge to edge clarity a little better overall clarity and focus wheel again uh, is real nice and tight with the Athlon Midas, real good rubber, ar rubber armor as well. Um, low light was a little bit better uh, with the Midas than the, um, than the Maven as well. Uh, so as far as our rankings, we put the, the Midas just, just barely ahead of the uh, Maven CS1. And moving up to the $500 bracket, uh, next in line is the Zeiss uh, Terra ED. Now, these are a really well-built pair of binoculars. Eye cups are really nice and solid. They are much better built than I was expecting for this uh, this price range of a binocular. Uh, diopter here is not locking, unfortunately, but again, there's only a couple here in this price bracket that are, so it's not a surprise. It's more the standard for them not to be locking in this price bracket. Uh, real nice eye relief as well. Not a ton on the Terra, but, but plenty, and is real comfortable that way. Focus wheel is really nice and smooth as well. Uh, not a lot of play or really any play to speak of there. So really good that way with the Zeiss Terra ED binoculars. Edge to edge clarity was just okay. Um, as far as in the rankings of these binoculars, this uh, edge to edge was near the, the middle, uh, mid, uh, mid range as far as edge to edge clarity. Overall clarity was, was again okay, nothing fantastic. But in this price bracket, uh, these, the Zeiss Terra's uh, ranked here and I believe it was the number six spot in this in our rankings here or at number seven spot uh, Overall, so there's a lot of good things about these optically not the best performers um, But they were solid in a lot of the categories and really really well built also uh, The Koa these are the XD2s They're the new ones from Koa field of view is fantastic on these uh, is The biggest field of view of this group if I remember correctly uh, eye relief is great and real nice uh, Eye cups, real defined clicks there as well. I really like them. Really like the design of these uh, Koa XDs. Uh, the focus wheel, really nice and smooth as well. No play in there, uh, which is real nice. Uh, no locking diopter again as standard. 
really nice and compact and lightweight also that's really impressive with these and and they're just they don't you don't have a lot of eye strain looking through these there was more eye strain in in uh in the the athlon and the maven here and even with the zeissers i noticed more eye strain there than these koas they were really really good that way overall image clarity wasn't fantastic on the bd2s here but you know again they're they're in that 450 range so they're not all the way up to the 500 dollars but they were a solid but just not quite the resolution to some of the others in this in this price bracket but a good solid pair of binoculars Next up, the Bushnell Forge. Again, these are all in 10 by 42, um, so they can be a little bit different from when, if you go to more or less power, but these are all in 10 by 42. Eye cups are, are actually pretty good on these Bushnells. Uh, you've got pretty good eye relief here. There's a little bit of play in there, as you can see. Uh, not, not the best on the eye cups, but, but you know they were fine. And these are after a season of use as well. Focus wheel is a little bit mushy. There's a little bit of play in there. It uh, wasn't my favorite, uh, but you know you, you get around that. It's not that at the end of the world there. Center of the, uh, center of the image clarity on the forge here was really, really good. Uh, surprisingly good. Edge edge clarity is not that great. You lose a lot of clarity uh, when you move to the edges of, of these forge, but the center of the image is really, really good. Low light performance was very good in these as well. Overall, they support, uh, really surprised us in their performance. As you can tell here, they are bigger than anything else in the group. They're taller, and they're on the heavy side as well. Uh, but they, they are actually a surprisingly good performer in this $500 price bracket. And again, they're in that 450 range, maybe 470 if I remember right. But a really good pair of binoculars from Bushnell. Uh, one thing you can notice, the difference between, say, like these Koas, um, as well as the Zeiss, and really everything else here, except for the loopholes we'll touch on in a minute, the Binocular tripod adapter screws out here on the on the end of these dual hinge design So any of them that have this that uh, the adapter goes out on the edge there So it makes it a little more wobbly and not my favorite design as far as attaching these to a tripod uh, But it's kind of makes for a more comfortable viewing and holding with your hands But the tripod adapter is out on the end there. So I don't like, like that quite as much, but so far uh, just uh, forgot to mention all these have uh, tripod adapters or are, are able to they are threaded for a tripod adapter so you can put them on top of a tripod. Next in line here is the Vortex Viper HD. These were a real nice pair of binoculars as well. Uh, good good uh, clarity on the center of the image. Just okay on the edge to edge. As far as the focus wheel, is, it was nice and tight. Not a lot of play there. Um, as I've mentioned in, in the reviews, if you go check that over on the website, and again, we're going to go into a lot more detail on the website on that article than we will here. So definitely go check that out. Again, link in the description to that. But with all the Vortex binoculars here, this, uh, this rubber piece here on the outside is glued on. And uh, when I was using the, the Razer HDs over the course of a year, that came unglued on me at one point. And so it was kind of frustrating to have that happen out in the field, you know, just a little glue or send into Vortex. Of course, they take care of you, great warranty. But it did have that, that happen here. And it's the same on the Vipers, the Razer HDs, and the Razer UHDs. Um, same design there. So. Something to keep in mind, not my favorite, but the, as far as the, the mechanism itself works really well. The eye cups, pretty much the same eye cups as the, in the, the Vipers all the way up to the Razor UHDs. Really thin here around the edges. Um, it's, it's a little on the thin side as far as comfort wise. Wasn't the favorite of our group testing. Again, we tested all these. There's 10 volunteers who tested all these, ranked them. We did a weighted score as well, so we put the, together weighted score rankings on all of these. So that's over again over on the the article for the, on the website. But the the eye cups here are real are narrow and, and not quite as comfortable in your eye sockets. And there's a little bit more play in here. They're a little looser than I like. Uh, they tend to move on you when they're in your bino harness, that sort of thing. And a little more resistance would be nice, but you know you can't have everything. One uh, thing about the, the Vipers here is they actually do have a locking diopter, and then this price point, that's, that's a rarity. So that's really nice about the Vipers here. Overall, solid performer. Not the best in the group, but they were, they were real solid. Uh, next in line, we've got the Leupold BX4s, and these are the uh, Pro Guides. These were a really, really good pair of binoculars as well, and I've got them lined up in the, in the position that they ranked for us in our group testing as well. I forgot to mention that. Uh, eye cups here are, are nice and tight, but they're a little bit on the looser side. I'd like to see a little more resistance, kind of similar to the razors. You know, they could move on you out in the field. Uh, they are comfortable. Uh, the eye cups are comfortable there, and the focus mechanism here is real nice. It's not too much resistance, and there's not uh, not play in there, uh, so you're good that way. 
Uh, again, with the, the BX4 Pro, gui Pro Guides, you have a locking diopter, which is really nice, particularly in this price bracket. One thing we noted with the BX4 Pro Guides here, uh, during the daytime, they were good optically, not great, but good. But then once low light hit, the coatings and the color, uh, color hues, color tones the Leupold puts on these really made them come alive when we hit low light. A bunch of people in the testing noted, it's like, man, these were really came alive at low light. They went from kind of a you know, mid to lower end, mid pack uh, rankings, and then people went back and looked at them and said, wow, these are great. So they moved them up in the rankings to the overall number three spot in this, this price category. Really nice pair of binoculars. And like the, the bush nails here, they've got the dual hinge design, open, open bridge design, which really makes for a comfortable viewing. And they're really nice and lightweight and compact too. Really a great pair of binoculars there. Uh, one of the surprises was up next here, the GPO Passion ED binoculars. They're really compact, as you can see, really lightweight and compact. Focus mechanism is real smooth. It's definitely on the loose side as far as there's not a ton of resistance here. So you don't have, uh, it's more likely to move on you in your bino harness, but you know, nothing, nothing outstanding that way. Um, you don't have a locking diopter, unfortunately, with these guys, and it's right underneath that eye cup. One of the things, as far as the eye cups, they're nice and tight, but there's not a, a lot of eye relief with these. That was kind of a bummer. So you kind of have to hold them away from your eyes, and you can't really sink them down into your eye sockets if, if you like to do that, so keep that in mind. Uh, overall performance, though, of these really surprised the group. Uh, they were really, really good in, you know, in pretty much all of the categories. Edge Edge Clarity was, was very good for this price point. Center of the image, uh, clarity was very good in the price point. Chromatic aberration was, was good as well. Uh, just across the board, they did really, really well and they performed very well. Definitely one of the contenders here that surprised us. Something to check out if you're looking for that 500 price point, $500 price point, these Passion EDs from GPO were really surprising. And the, the one thing I do like about these is that you've got the, the tripod threading right here on the back of the, the, the one hinge here. So it makes it more stable having that, that attachment point right in the middle. So really a nice pair of binoculars right there. And they ranked at the number two overall spot. Number one overall spot was the Athlon Cronus UHD. These were hands down the, the winner of this category. The clarity, overall clarity, the edge to edge clarity. Everything about these outperformed the price point. These were super impressive. Uh, they even some of the group even mentioned that they would take these over some that were in the $1,000 price category. So a fantastic value in the Athlon Cronus. A couple of things that, to note about this: you've got a lot of eye relief, which is really nice. Uh, they have more eye relief than than I believe any of the other ones in here. I have to go back and check that, but they have a, a lot of eye relief, which is real nice. Focus wheel is nice. It's a little bit spongy. Um, but there's not any play in there. Sometimes that little bit of sponginess can help in refining an image as well. But uh, the, over, the image clarity was absolutely fantastic. One of the things you could get with this as well is a unique push button uh, diopter here. So you push that here and then it locks into place. So it can't be bumped unless you push that, that spring loaded button down and move it when you're setting your diopter. So really a unique diopter with the Athlon Cronus here, but a really, really fantastic design that's not gonna get bumped on you. And it's really easy to change as well. Again, same placement here for the tripod adapter threading. I like that right there really, really well. So at $4.99, that's full retail price. I've seen them even cheaper than that on sale sometimes. They are really a fantastic binocular, absolutely great value. Another thing to note on some of these, the, the hinge is kind of loose, but they do a really good job of making this tight enough to where it doesn't move all over on you in your, your binocular harness. So that is the Athlon Cronus. Again, more details on all of these over on the website, backwardspursuit.com. We're gonna, we get into more of the, the weeds on a bunch of these different binoculars, but wanted to do a quick rundown on here. And again, links to all these down in the description. Drop us some questions or comments on any of these. Uh, we can go into more detail and happily answer any questions we can after doing a bunch of testing. Again, we tested these with a group of 10 guys, uh, two different sessions of about four hours each, all different lights, different things we were looking at and focusing on animals and hillsides and bushes and everything, testing for a whole bunch of different things. So lots of testing done into this. That's a quick rundown here, so this video doesn't get too long. Thanks for joining us here today. We really appreciate it. Keep your eye out for the next in next uh, video in this series. We're going to look at the $1,000 price point and do a rundown of those ones. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.